can see it's right here in this inflow notch and it's continuing to move northeast. Barrel is starting to book it on out of here, which is good. The hottest 4th of July on record. See that Idabel? They're still dealing like it's summer. It's 81 down there, but you can see where that cold front came through. Are you in any of these shaded regions? Galveston County, Harris County, Chambers County. So those rain chances do increase Saturday and Sunday. Confirm tornado and you can see this isn't just a tiny little rope tornado. Those triple digit heat indices that will likely lead to heat illness. Hurricane Helene is now a category three major hurricane. Carol starting to encounter just a little bit of dust that's going to continue tearing the storm apart piece by piece that you can see that inflow and coming out. That is where that tornado is. If we switch back to shear or velocity, right where that circle is, is where you're going to see that tornado. But as it goes into the Bay of Campeche and into the Gulf of Mexico, you start to see this turn northward while Barrel is still a tropical storm. Not emphasize this enough. Students stay put in your shelter. We call this rapid intensification. And one of those reasons for this is these extremely warm water temperatures. And these are temperatures you see in mid-September when the peak of hurricane season is upon us, not on July 2nd. One of the more extreme impacts we are seeing and probably one of the biggest impacts is that flooding. When we say get home by 4 p.m. and know where your shelter is, be prepared to get in that shelter, we mean it. I mentioned a lot of uncertainty with Barrel's path as we get closer to this weekend, and you can thank this high pressure system right here in the lower 48. While that's bringing us triple digit temperatures, it's also playing a key role in Barrel's path. A very cloudy day, but we have broken that freezing mark. It is 32 degrees here in Norman. Very cloudy skies. Winds are very calm, just barely under 10 miles an hour across the rest of the metro. You can see Oklahoma City's below freezing. Everyone's just kind of hovering around low 30s, upper 20s, and for the rest of the state, everyone's pretty much in the same case, except eastern Oklahoma. They're in the 40s. Guyman in the 40s as well. So tomorrow, I want you to enjoy your day. There's going to be a few scattered showers throughout the afternoon hours because Sunday we have that severe weather threat. I'm going to tell you about that coming up, but winds are going to be relatively light. We're going to climb into the 40s tomorrow, so we're going to slowly warm up before this big severe weather event on Sunday. You can see Norman, Oklahoma City, Edmond, Enid included in this enhanced risk for severe weather. That is level three out of five ranking. The rest of the state of Oklahoma is in a slight risk of severe weather, a two out of five ranking. So this is the first major severe weather event of the season. Very early for it to be in February, but tornadoes are going to be very brief and spin up. If we do find some, they're going to be at a medium level. Wind really going to be the biggest threat with how fast these tornadoes are moving. Hail is going to be a very kind of low threat and isolated threat in areas, and we're not going to have to worry about any of that flooding, like I said, because these storms are going to be moving incredibly fast across the state of Oklahoma. And this threat is fueled by all this Gulf moisture coming up from the Gulf of Mexico across the state of Texas right here into the state of Oklahoma, giving this severe setup that storm energy we need to make that dry line to push across the state of Oklahoma. So to time that out for you on your Sunday, you can see we're clear tonight. Saturday, you have that few pop up showers as you go throughout your day a little bit heavier in Tulsa. But Sunday, 5 p.m., you can see western Oklahoma kind of on the border with the Texas Panhandle. These storms are starting to fire up and just how quickly they gain intensity across the state. Between 8 and 9 o'clock here in Norman, Oklahoma City, just past Enid in Stillwater, just the pinks, the reds, these storms are strong. That is when we can worry about that hail threat. So these are going to continue across eastern Oklahoma. They're going to be out of the state by midnight. That's just how fast these storms are moving out into Arkansas. So like I said, that flooding threat is very low. But with that tornado threat, we need to know the difference of a watch and a warning. So just some quick fun facts for you all to know. Tell the difference between a watch and a warning. You need to have a plan if one's coming or not, and you need to closely monitor all the weather conditions across your area. And you also need to know where that safe place is. If you have a basement, you're gonna to wanna to go to the lowest level interior room of your home. If you don't have a basement, you're gonna to wanna to go to the most interior room of your home. That can be a closet, that can be a pantry, anything, a bathroom. You can see on our model, 
right there. Welcome back to OU Nightly and looking at the South Oval right now, you can see there is not a cloud in the sky going to be a great evening for that parade and raw rally. However, it is very hot, 88 degrees, very above average and across the rest of the state. We're dealing with this heat as well. 90s across southern and western Oklahoma. So going into tomorrow, this came, this game is still going to be hot. Starting out the tailgate hours, 63 degrees by the end of the game, upper 80s once again 86 degrees so we're going from above average temperatures to above average rainfall you can see Oklahoma Arkansas and Texas in this darker green area for rainfall and this area needs it the most you can see extreme drought conditions in the south as we speak and this is continued on so where are we getting this rain from well hurricane Norma in the eastern Pacific is actually going to make landfall through Mexico make its way through Texas and into Oklahoma by Tuesday. This moisture is hanging out and bringing us those rain chances. So another look at it, you can see Norma way down here still hasn't made landfall in Mexico before it makes its way once again through Texas and into Oklahoma. We have this high pressure system with the rainfall on Tuesday that makes its way on out. But here comes Thursday, another chance of rainfall before that leaves. And then come Friday, we have this dip in the jet stream. Cooler temperatures are on the way. So putting it all together above average temperatures for Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we have those rain chances. And then come Friday, we dip down into the 40s. A ton of rain all at once. Back to the desk.